Well, good evening. We're here at Darwin Football Stadium. This is Larrakia Park. We're on Larrakia Country. We want to thank our, our elders, past, present, and those emerging for uh, giving us uh, the opportunity to play football on this, uh, this country here. Uh, it's a beautiful pitch. It's a beautiful night for football. It's around 22 to 23 degrees. That's the age of the man next to me. Um, John Tambora is our expert analyst. Hey, Johnny, good to see you again, man. Bruce, good evening. How are you? Yes, that's the first lie. The other one will be, you're looking fit. No, no, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, mate, it's great to have you here. Listen, just before we, we get to this game, which we'll talk about Darwin Hearts and, um, and Port Darwin, last night you had your, your um, National Training Centre teams play here for the very first time. I mean, they had some games on Thursday, uh, sorry, Sunday, but Thursday night under lights. Mate, how good was that? Did you did you really get a lot out of that? Oh, mate, it was it was a treat. I mean, I was licking my lips watching that yes, yeah, yesterday. So, in terms of what we're we, you know we've been training for the last two weeks, um, watching it come to life was was extremely pleasing. And again, talking to all the coaches, um, you know, players playing now, playing together. It's a full time program, and just looking at the smiles. I mean, that says it all for me. So again, results will come. We're not worried about results as long as they're playing as a team and they're obviously implementing the stuff they're doing at training. Um, yeah, it was a joy. Great night last night. Great night. And one of the things I do want to mention is that I went and uh, hang around the technical areas a couple of times just to listen and watch your coaches. Um, I thought they were exemplary, mate, in the way they spoke to their team, their players, mm -hmm. and you know, just some of the instructions they were giving, and they were really tailored for the right age group. And so you've done well there. Exactly. And, and, and we know we're only two weeks in. So, again, results will come. We're talking about, we're talking about fitness and, and, and how things are going to work and so forth. So... If, if, you know, fitness will come as the games get better and better. So, again, we're looking at getting the players playing, playing a certain style. Yep. We're creating a culture. And, again, there's a lot of good things that we saw last night. Yeah, absolutely. I, I brought my personal fan with me as well. He's just uncontrollably and excited and energetic over here. He just wants to be in every scene. Um, uh, now, quickly, two teams. Port Darwin, first win last weekend. Uh, sorry, f um, a really good game last weekend against the champions didn't come off, but Darwin Hart's first win last weekend. Look, it's a, it's a very different style of play from both those teams. Uh, and what are you expecting from Port Darwin and Darwin Hearts in the way they actually approached the games last weekend? Well, again, you know, Hearts, new boys in the Premier League, um, they had a lot to prove and they didn't disappoint. I mean, watching them against Azuri, um, they've, got some, they've got two or three players there that can, you know, can yeah. turn the game. So. Yep. Um, I know, uh, speaking to Lee Addison, which is Port Darwin's coach, they're well aware of that, and they know they've got to step up. And, you know, they played against the champions last week. Uh, things didn't go their way, even though they were in the game in, yeah. in, in, in some parts of the game. So, look, they'll be looking to bounce back today, and we're better to start today against uh, the Hearts. So, looking forward to this one. And the good thing about watching over a season, 20 rounds or whatever it is, to see whether Port Darwin goes at the pace of these guys... Or tries to get these guys, many Darwin Hearts, to play at their pace. Because Saturday night was frenetic. That was absolutely frenzied. Um, of all the three games we saw, it was just end-to-end, -end, close contact. You know, they'd missed 12 weeks of not having contact. That was clear. Um, it reminded me of those little dogs, you know, those little terriers that you... Yeah. Get away, get away from my ankles. So I look forward to seeing this one tonight from that point of view. Listen, John, uh, the other thing too is that we've got a, a special caller tonight too. I don't know if you know Tia. Uh, I've spoken to him a couple of times. Yep. I haven't met him personally, but I'm looking forward to working with him tonight. Yeah, mate, he's the voice of Victorian football. Uh, he's done his stints on Fox Sports as well. Just an avid lover of the game. And that, that's what I love about Australia is that we have uh, a number of people who want to give us an opportunity to hear them on our little own Darwin Premier League, mate. So we still are the very first place anywhere in the country that can play football. I just want to let you know that again for the 13th time today. But we are, and our good friends in Western Australia, they, their National Premier League will be back probably about the 4th or 5th of July. So their seniors won't be back until then. South Australia maybe at the end of ju uh, June. But, um, you know, how good was Sunday with our mini roos and juniors going back, mate? There were just thousands upon thousands of kids around all our grounds here in Darwin and around Catherine and down in Alice Springs uh, and out in Gove and Elmer, where the kids were playing. That was great. And uh, football is back big time. And uh, can you imagine that sleep the night before Sunday? Your game was at 8.30, so the kids are up at 5.30, Christmas time. Have breakfast in the back seat of the car, ready to go, and you're like 90 minutes from getting there, and it's two minutes down the road. It was exactly. like that, wasn't it? Exactly. And as I said, I, I got up quite early that, that <laughs> yeah, Sunday you're the morning, same. and I and I was saying, "Geez, there's quite a bit of traffic. What's going on?" Yeah. And everyone's going into the ground. So look, football's back. 
the atmosphere is back and you know where better is to play here at Darwin Football Stadium well, tonight. You're absolutely right. The atmosphere is back because they were just cheering on our three match officials so you know what's coming. Look, John, I'll let you go because you've got to get down to be the expert commentator with Tio. Yeah, so you're going to go downstairs there and I wish you all the best on the call. I'll see you at halftime. Cheers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a game of two very different styles, two very different clubs. Port Darwin with a long, long history. Darwin Hearts, just a new club in town. And by that, they've probably had five or six years. I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out. This is the Men's Premier League in Darwin, in the Northern Territory, the safest place in Australia. Good evening, and uh, thank you for the intro as we get ready to kick off the third round of football Northern Territory. Darwin Hearts against... Port Darwin. Teo Pelizzeri is my name, about to be joined by John Tamburis. Let's get into the teams. Darwin Hearts tonight. Jordan Stobart is their goalkeeper. And for those of you not familiar with the sides, number two, Mbakana Nalua. Three, Jacob Meek back from suspension. Four, Durbakaki. Five, Sudip Podel. Six is the captain, Kasem Rakane. Seven, Niroj Shrestha. Eight, Mohamed Al Saleh. Ten, Mamoun Dame. 11 is Sajal Shrestha and 21, Osim Bimali. And then looking at Port Darwin tonight, their goalkeeper Dominic Price. And then you can see on the screen there the lineup Declan O'Shea, number two, Tobias Kogai, number three, Dylan Quinn, number four, five is Jay Adams, six, Jonah Rule, seven is Yanni Casales, eight, John Dean, nine, Roberto Sicles, ten is Joseph Wiafa, and 11 is Daxon Masai. So it is a winless port on the foot of the six-team table at the moment. And Darwin Hearts with three points of their own. And they came last weekend with a 1-0 win against Uni Atsuri. Back in March in the opening round of the season, Hearts were beaten 6-3 by the defending champions, Casuarina. Maybe we'll get a shootout of... That style tonight. We had a goal fest last week, so hopefully we can get more of the same. And results so far this season for Port Darwin. They lost 4-3 to Mindil Aces, who love that scoreline and love a classic. And then it was a 3-1 loss to Casuarina last weekend. And they weren't overly disappointed about that showing against the defending champions either. Benches for both teams. Darwin Hearts. Bjomian A, Santosh Shrestha, Ganesh Gurung, Hussein Bakarat, and Shrawan Shrestha. And for Port Darwin, Shadi Kantabai, who does have two goals this season, so watch out for him if he comes on at some point during the game. Liam Hurley, Matthew Peters, Isaac Paul, and Jacob Gittens. The coaches, Damon Aldrich, third season Australian coach of Darwin Hearts. And for Port Darwin, it's the Englishman, Lee Addison who was in his first season at the club, having transferred to Darwin due to his day job in the military. For those of you not familiar with Darwin Hearts, they're a non-profit sports organisation uh, established in 2010 under the management of the Nepalese Association of the Northern Territory. And at the beginning of its formation, they were going by the name of Youth United. And they've engaged the Nepalese community quite successfully and developed a senior men's team moving up the divisions of football northern territory and now known as darwin hearts it's an incredibly multicultural game tonight players with origins in the middle east in africa uh, certainly nepal along with australia the most significant heritage represented in this game with that darwin hearts connection and port darwin formed in 1996 following a merger of Parap and St. Mary's. And they have won the Premiership. They beat Darwin Olympic back in the 2012 Grand Final 5-1. And you can see them in the checkers tonight. John Tamburis, former NSL and A-League player, has uh, made his way to the commentary position. John, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who's going to win and why? Gee, Tio, this is going to be a tough one tonight. Uh, again, uh, Port Darwin played some good football last week. Uh, obviously went down to the champions. Obviously the new promoted, um, you know, the new team that's come up this this year, you know, they're looking pretty good, the Hearts team. So, mate, I'm going for a draw. I'm going for a draw tonight. And we are underway with that whistle. So, 
It is Port kicking off. Good vocal crowd in as well here at the Darwin Football Stadium tonight. And they're happy just to retain possession from kickoff in these early exchanges. Hope a long ball is knocked down, and this might be the first opportunity straight away. A little bit patient on the ball. Well, Darwin, and off to defer back. And now that probing ball down the wing won't have any joy there. So it's an early goal kick as these two teams just feel each other out in the opening minute of action. Now Darwin Hearts with the ball for the first time in this game. Ambitious long pass, missing its target over on the left side of the pitch and now a little bit of a debate over who's got the ball. Was it a throw? Was it out? It stayed in. So Port retained possession. Unsuccessfully through the left side. And now a ball over the top to go and chase. Keeper's got to go here and sharply off his line. There's Dominic Price able to get his first touch of the game. Port owning the ball in these first minutes. And now they're going to try their luck down the left side. Well defended by Osim Bumali. And then he may have undone the good work there as he was put under pressure and had to concede a corner and he apologizes to his teammates as a result. John, does either of these two teams have a significant advantage in the air or at set pieces? Again, um, watching Port down in their first game, they look quite uh, dangerous on set pieces. So we've got a couple of tall, tall boys in there that could, you know, could cause a few uh, problems for Hart. So you know, I think Hart will be uh, watching out on their set pieces tonight. It's going to be a corner right into the mixer. And then it was hard to the fall of the ball, able to clear. Hear the shout from the crowd. Who wants it? And the player who came up with the ball with Tobias Koge, but then he gave it away. Neat little step around. Clever. Probing long was good of a khaki. Now another long ball out to the wing. The cause to go and chase, but asking a bit too much of the runner there. Mohamed Al Saleh couldn't chase it down. So three minutes in and it's clear that the long ball is going to be Darwin Hart's primary method of attack when they get possession here. They haven't had much of the ball so far and we see the first real foul of the game. And the referee tonight, who is Ben Kyvert, is going to come in and play Peacemaker. Safe to say there's already a bit of spice in the game here. And John Dean, JD, as he's known to his Port Darwin teammates, is certainly policing the situation and is already laying down the law. We've had three and a half minutes and he's already saying you've done that twice. And it is going to be a talking to the captain, Kasem Rakane, going in and advocating for his team. Referee Ben Kyvert keeping a lid on things. So it is going to be Port Darwin restarting play after that foul. That was Mohamed Al Saleh there who we got a close up look at. And this is a good run from Niro Shrestha. One of the playmakers of this Darwin Hearts team. And as the ball goes through the right side of the area, we got to see the pace there, John, of Darwin Hearts when they finally had a bit of sustained possession. Yeah, exactly, Tio. And again, speaking to Port Darwin's coach before the game, they're well aware that on the count, especially that transition, um, Hearts have got some very, very pacey players up front. So. You know, it could go, it's one end to the under, and some of these players, they've got that, they could just go through the gears, and they're well aware of it. I can see that right now. So it's going to be a corner, first of the game, and Darwin Hearts will take it. 
Not many players in the penalty area, none in the six yard box. They're all working at the top of the area. And ultimately, a solid header gets caught out of trouble. A lot of players clustered around the ball, so Dean sends it long on his left foot. Of course, to go and chase for Roberto Ciclés. And he's just going to bomb it long and try for the spectacular. And he apologises to his teammates. He had perhaps thoughts of going viral like last week's winning goal for the Middle Aces, but didn't quite get the right connection on the shot that time. It's a close up look there at Tobias Kogge with Port Darwin. Straight back to the keeper. Trying to get something going for Darwin Hearts, and through the left side, they have a bit more joy. Desperately trying to keep possession here, Mamoon Dame. Trying to be taken by Sudip Padel. Spinning on the ball, Mohamed Al Saleh. And the ball trapped on this left touchline. Just trying to work it out of this little pocket. Game has hit a bit of a hold, so Podell will take the throw in again. And this time into space for Mamu Dane to run into and cleared out for a corner. No nonsense. Another corner coming up then for Darwin Hart. And it seems as though, John, they've settled into this game quite nicely. They have. They have. And, and again, they've got those those technically good players. To, you know, the, the, the more they get on the ball, the confidence will grow as well. So you can see hearts have settled at the moment. Port down. Um, again, they're, they're, they're still trying to settle. So, you know, it's an interesting one in terms of, you know, who settles first. But at this moment, it looks like hearts are, as a team that's settled. As they attack the near post on that corner, there was goalkeeper and defender there together to combine. And now attempting to counter-attack Port Darwin. Roberto Sikles lays it back. Now the switch of flanks. Kogai. He's going to roam into the centre. And that pass is just a little overhit. Had designs on sending the left winger, but quite get the ball to break the right way for him. Pressure in the middle. Durbakaki keeps it moving, but he's hurried up and gives away possession. Bukaki there. That's, that's 35 years old from Nepal. Declan O'Shea, unmissable with that big beard at the centre of defence. Sickly. Nice little chop pass. A whistle went, and eventually the referee is able to stop play for offside. He just continued on there, thinking they might still have a chance to attack, but not to be. Dragging that pass down gives Port Darwin half a chance, but settling at the feet now of Al Saleh. Exchange of headers. Port Darwin unable to do much in an attacking sense on that occasion. See the encouragement coming there. Mm -hmm. 
And once again, the flag is up for offside. John Tamburis, what are you making of some of these offside calls? Are they a long offside or are they really tight margins? Look, I think they're just, I think in terms of timing their run, I think they're just getting just too quick. They just want to just do things too quick. I think if they just be patient, um, they could probably get in behind there a couple of times. And seeing Roberto there on this occasion as well, he's, you know, he, he went through it before and just now again. If he times his run, I think he could get in behind. It's just that timing of the run and obviously the delivery of the ball has to be a bit better. Nero Shrestha trying to do it all himself against two opponents and he is going to succeed, winning the ball back. And then he has his teammate pick his pocket. Through ball on the right side. Twisting and turning. And then the cross leaves a bit to be desired at the end of that twisting phase of play from Mbukana Nalua. He has scored a couple of goals for his team so far this season, though, so he is a danger. Price takes the goal kick. And in spite of the efforts there of Kasem Rakane, it is going to be Port Darwin ball. Caught by surprise there. A lot of directing traffic, but not playing the ball. And so through came Mohamed Al Saleh and now Niro Shrestha, unmarked man. And it moved up and hit Mohamed Dahim. And then off the crossbar. Great chance for Darwin Hearts, but they weren't able to score. And Bakana Nalor with the final header on the ball after Mamoun Dame brought it down. And looking at the replay, right there, he actually did well to get back and win that second header. Goalkeeper was out of the equation. And John Tamburis, it doesn't get much closer than that. It doesn't. And again, obviously, the centre midfielder just switched off there, as you said before, TA. He was obviously complaining about something that happened earlier and ball went over him you know Hart got him on the quick break and they were lucky not to go one nil down there port darwin hearts they may have been a little bit slow out of the blocks in the first three minutes but it was like the game is a lot more on their terms right now they've got dangerous players they're able to move the ball at speed and mamun the game who nearly had an assist to his name a moment ago persisting here Like a handball in the middle of the pitch from John Dean. Referee is going to let it slide because it's advantage Darwin Hearts in any case. Through the right side, Bimali is making a late run, and that's good keeping from Dominic Price. Sliding out, knew where the edge of his area was. A slip, but it won't derail Podell. Mohamed Al Saleh. And they're really working this right flank at the moment. Darwin Hearts. Not many numbers in the area. And the assistant referee is flagging, saying the ball went beyond the byline and it will be a goal kick. So Port Darwin off the hook. At the moment, they need to steady. They're the ones under the pump here. Battle for possession. Gogay recovers. Dangerous pass, though. They're really hunting the ball at the moment, Darwin Hearts. Dutabakaki went through, but couldn't take it with him. And now, Port Darwin escape. That's a good slide challenge to deny Roberto Sicles a bit of momentum down that left flank. Port Darwin, if anything, trying to score against the run of play here. Oh, 
center backs combining. And now attempting to go through the center, Al Saleh is trying to thread through Nalua, couldn't do so. He might get another chance here though, this time he's shut down straight away. Swinging the ball over to the left, Port Darwin. Danger here, and that was Daxon Masai. We haven't seen much of him in this game so far. Promoted out of the reserves into the starting 11 for tonight's game. The Zimbabwean. Did enough to impress the coach. Lee Addison in the reserves game last week. So not just onto the bench, but straight into the starters. And he might be involved here. He's caught behind a couple of defenders and it's going to be another corner coming up. Port Darwin have had a good little spell the last three minutes, Tio. As you can see, they're slowly coming into the game. So it's starting to get a little bit interesting. They've been able to control territory, but in a sense, Darwin Hearts may not mind that because it means they can break end to end if Port Darwin unable to do something meaningful from this corner right here. So they'll be on alert for the counter-attack. They do have plenty of tall targets to aim for, though. Declan O'Shea, right on the penalty spot, is going to leap here, challenge the keeper. And Stobart didn't get a clean grab on it, but it's out of the box. And it's temporary relief for now. Trying to keep the pressure on. Port Darwin on the right side. And that cross is shanked straight into Dean and ends up going out for a goal kick. It's not quite what they wanted there, John, from that corner kick, but they were able to at least cause a bit of a nervous moment for Stobart in the Darwin Hearts goal. Yeah, exactly, Tio. And just watching them now, as I said, they're slowly coming into the game. Um, again, they've had a good little spell the last four minutes or five. So, again, they, they're coming for them now. So, you know, at first ten minutes was probably Hearts that, were, that settled the quickest and, and were more into the game. But as the game's getting on, um, you can see that Port's getting um, more and more into the game. That's under a little bit of pressure. They're able to play through it. And the referee's whistle will help them here. No advantage. Paul Stobart in the Facebook comments says he's watching from England. Come on, the hearts. You can leave a comment or a question if you want. We'll try to get to them through the course of the night's action. If you're watching on Facebook Live, Football NT page. O'Shea. Sends it out to the left side. Hearts turn in possession now. Burst of acceleration comes from Ospin Bamali. And this is Nalur. Keeper comes out and he's done that well a couple of times. And was there contact? And Bukana Nalur is hurt here, and so the goalkeeper is going to throw it out. John, how did that look there at the ground? Again, didn't look like a penalty to me, but just looking at Pricey, the goalkeeper there, that on, on three or four occasions already, he's coming off high off his line and, and picking that ball up. Look, he came off his line very, very quick there, and it's good to see goalkeeper gives, gives the back four confidence as well. So I'm sure Pricey, as the game will go on, he'll get confidence from that, and his back four will be getting confidence from him as well. Got a question here in the Facebook comments. How many goals for Wi-Fi tonight? We haven't seen much of Joseph We are for so far, John. He hasn't really got into the game. Same as uh, Dax and Masai, his strike partner. Exactly. Um, again, maybe it just looks like to me that, you know, Dax and playing on the, on the right-hand side. Um, Port Darwin seems to be going a lot down the left wing um, in this first half. So hopefully we can get the ball switched across and get Dax on the ball if we can and see a bit of action on the right-hand side. Perhaps reflective of the fact that they've relied on Cyclos to do most of the attacking so far. They just haven't been a cohesive attacking unit so far, Port Darwin. And now this giveaway is a terrible result. They've given it to Mbukana Nalur. And now Niro Shreshtha. He is the playmaker for this Darwin Hearts team. And can he conjure up something from a standing start here? Able to skip past his marker. And able to keep his feet. 
It's a real tangle there. Got to be super careful. Shrestha was able to get the pass away, and it's swept clear. He is the player for Darwin Hearts that can create a goal. He almost did on that occasion. Referee's bringing things back. It must have gone beyond the touchline. That's Jonah Rule, the 17-year-old. Still in high school, playing senior football for Port Darwin. And his opponent, Durbakaki. Throw in for Darwin Hearts. And they're going to work it slowly down the line, but the assistant referee over on the outer side, Jacinta Misob, is saying that it's going to be Port Darwin ball. That was exciting, though, John. Niroj got going down the right flank, but he just couldn't find a teammate with that final ball. Exactly. He uh, ducked and weaved and a bit of magic there. Got him in the box. I thought he was going to go down there for a minute when I saw the centre-back chasing him there. So, again, he's one of their danger, danger players there. So, Port Darwin will be doing their best to try and keep him quiet tonight. Yeah, if anything, Port Darwin did well not to dive in and give away a penalty. Now they've got possession in their attacking half. Ball on the left side. This is Wiafa. Sweeping it through the box. Squared back. And the pass is not the greatest from rule. Darwin Hart's escaping with the ball. Nero Shreshtha will look up and see it all to do. Lots of checkered shirts, not many teammates. So he's going to go on a solo run, and he comes unstuck. Yanni Casales got him on that occasion. And now it's Osim Bamali with his own mazy run, and then he just stepped over the ball and left it behind. Seeing individual players trying to show off their skills at the moment. Kogai, and this is Daxon, but he can't keep the ball in, hard up against the touchline. Question from Gavin in the Facebook comments, who is Port Darwin's number four? He looks tidy on the ball, Port Darwin's number four, Dylan Quinn. Got a break here. How uh, are the conditions at the stadium, John? Uh, drinks break, as we can see here. Is it oppressive, or would you say it's just pretty normal? Um, in terms of dry season weather, we, we you know, it's, it's dropped down to about 22 to, to 23 these last three or four nights. Tonight, I reckon, it's probably about up to 27, 28. So in terms of dry season weather, it's a little bit hot for dry season weather. Again, there's a, there's a touch of uh, humidity in here as well, so it's quite humid as well. But just looking at the, at the conditions, again, um, pitch is quite dewy as well, so that ball will tend to zip around as well. We've got a pretty good idea of, of how these two teams are playing at the moment, but as we've touched on during the call, Port Darwin need to bring Joseph Wiafa and Daxon Masai into the game a bit more. We've, we've seen plenty of Roberto Ciclers, but they're just not combining in attack, whereas Darwin Hearts, it already feels like we've been able to see a bit of a, a sign and, and a show of the individual talents that they've got in their attacking third of the pitch. Exactly, and, and you can see every time that ball goes forward, especially for Hearts, they've got those those wingers that are tucked in to, to support that front ball and the nine as well and the ten that's coming through as well. So at the moment, you know, with Port Darwin, that ball goes into Roberto Ciclas and, and there's no support there. So it just looks like it's breaking down in that final third for them. Rishi in the Facebook comments says, all the best to Darwin Hearts. Michael says, go Jordan Stoddart. And Anthony says, just good to see a game on. Well, it is the only game going in Australia. We know there's a big audience watching in Nepal as well due to Darwin Hearts having grown out of the Darwin Nepalese community. And of course, all around the world, these games are getting attention as football slowly gets back onto the pitch. The different codes and... The different NPL leagues as well will hopefully be following suit before too long. And we're back underway after the break for a drink. A chance to regroup for the remainder of this first half, which is goalless, but it's a game that feels like a goal could be coming at any moment. And a shallow back pass sees Nalur in, and he's been body-checked heavily 
by Dominic Price. Well, again, Pro again, Pricey coming off his line very, very quick. And you can see there it was Stevie G with the back pass, and then Harold Schumacher comes out and absolutely irons him out there. And Bacana and Nalua, decision time for the referee and the assistant. Darwin Hart's uh, protesting that he led with his hands and intended to knock the man over. What's the decision? It looks as though it's just going to be a throw. Was that... We'll come back to that as we've got a live ball in play, John. But I'll ask you your thoughts on that flash point in a moment. But right now, Port Darwin are on the attack. And they are looking to capitalise after maybe a bit of a lucky escape as they work through the centre of the pitch. Jonah Rule. He's got a runner breaking down the right side. Kogai. And then he's not on the same wavelength. So, John, your thoughts on that coming together between Dominic Price and Mbakana Nalua? It's a tough one, that one, Tio. Uh, just looking at it now, um, again, it looked like a 50-50, and I think Price, he just got a foot in, in the nick of time there. I think if he, if he hesitated, probably a, a split second there, I reckon it maybe could have caught a penalty there. So I reckon he, his timing was probably 100% right, to be honest. And so it remains 11 versus 11, no cards, not many fouls either. It's been a good, clean game for the most part. And both teams happy to get on with it now. O'Shea venturing forward, hooked away. Back at the center of defense. Jay Adams. Port Darwin, they're not being pressed at the moment. If anything, the, the game has just had a little bit of a drop in energy. It's given them a bit of space, but that's not the greatest touch there from Quinn, and he gives the ball away. And his teammate O'Shea is in to make a good challenge. And now Adams with the header, but it's been given away by a poor first touch. Al Saleh through the left side, the right side. This is Shreshtar. Oh, he's hit the post. And now the follow-up goes out for a goal kick. So they've been luckless in this half, Darwin Hearts. They've hit the crossbar, and now they have rattled the right-hand post. Again, Tio on that right-hand side. It's that, it's that Shreshtar again on that, causing all the, all the damage on that right-hand side. So again, Port Darwin will have to... Keep an eye on him because you give him so much space, he'll punish you. So goal kick coming up. Bit of comment coming through on that incident with the goalkeeper. We'll read it out, some of your comments at the next break in play. We've almost crossed half an hour. We're still goalless. Somehow, Darwin Hearts have hit the woodwork twice. Port Darwin trying to capitalise against the run of play. And they will have a throw deep in their attacking third. And they are not in a hurry to take it either. Happy to go at walking place. You see at the bottom of the screen there, Port Darwin's coach, Lee Addison, shouting instructions. So here comes the long throw turned away at the near post. Possession taken by Niroj Shrashta. He's got the entire pitch to go. So he plays it to Mahmoud de game. Now through the left side, Darwin Hearts look to build. Podell. And it's knocked away from the feet of de game who made his ground quite well there, but ultimately couldn't keep possession. But it is Darwin Hearts' ball. And the foul on that occasion from Daxon Masai is going to lead to a free kick in the attacking half for Darwin Hearts. Bit of a rueful shake of the head as he gives the ball back and the free kick is going to be taken by Mohamed Al Saleh. As he looks up and surveys the scene. Set piece swinging to the edge of the box but it's all Port Darwin defending it looked like a handball there but Sikles is just going to take the ball and run and now they're trying to break into space 
And it's knocked on effectively. Weapa playing it back into the path and not quite. Kogai couldn't get there. Stobart quickly off his line. And then a foul in midfield. He's going to prevent the momentum from flowing. Dylan Quinn gets things back underway. John Dean knocks it down, 1-2, and then, well, not on the same wavelength over on the left side. And if we needed a passage of play to sum up the lack of cohesion of the Port Darwin front three, that's probably it. Not under a great deal of pressure, they gave the ball away. They might get another chance to make amends immediately. Dean sends it through the left, We offer, And he's got back to Dean, who really just took a swing in anger rather than any great purpose and balloons it out for a goal kick. So some of the comments coming in. Dave says, Pricey is a no-nonsense sweeper-keeper. Decision-making has been excellent so far. I think Port's number four would be better utilised if they played him, if they played through him. I'd like to see him on the ball a bit more. It's coming in from Dave on the comments. So he was happy with the goalkeeping of Dominic Price. 50-50, Port win it. Through the left side, Dean. And it's well defended by Osim Bimali, knocking it out for a throw. Paul says, good luck to Port Darwin. Fingers crossed they can get a good result as a birthday present for head coach Lee Addison. So happy birthday, coach. Let's see just how happy a birthday it might be. Love his team to score here and break the deadlock. Long throw is a good weapon they've got. And this one is knotted out at the near post. Both teams appealing that it's their ball. So we take another look at it. It was a difficult one to judge on first viewing. Maybe Jacob Meek got the last touch. The centre back wearing number 14 for Darwin Hearts. And for that reason, it is going to be a corner. That means that Stobart is organising... His defence here. Corner again attacking the near post. And this is Daxon. Oh, he had the chance there. Daxon Masai balloons it over the bar and John. He's been waiting for a chance, but he couldn't keep it on target that time. Exactly, Tio. Good opportunity to get himself into the game. And what better to get into the game by, you know, scoring a goal. So... You know, they're getting in some, some good positions, Port Darwin. I think that the final delivery or that final decision they're making in that final third is, is what's letting him down. Um, just looking at Jordan, um, he hasn't really had much to do tonight. So hopefully, you know, things change towards the end of this half and, and the second half. Poov says, love this. Watching from Geelong. Go Port Darwin, you can do it. Goal kick here. He's going to roll out for a heart's throw. And Sokorost, the great results archive and website, says watching in the UK seems very strange hearing us commentate on a Darwin match. Great to see football back, though. Thank you to Alan. Does a great job running the Sokorost website. This is Daxon Masai playing through Roberto Sicles. A bit of space to work with here. Oh, and he's over on the ball, Port Darwin. Their eyes were lighting up on that occasion. They had not had space like that in attack at any stage tonight. Maybe a few gaps opening up as we head towards the last 10 minutes of the half. And then a long ball to clear. He's going to get Darwin Hearts out of trouble and real frustration there for Declan O'Shea as he committed the foul on Mohamed Al Saleh. Declan's been very, very solid tonight. Um, watched him play against the champions, Kajarina, last week, and 
again, no nonsense defender. Um, he'll he'll be marshalling that back four tonight, and he's doing a great job so far. He's got to go to work organising again here, at Darwin Hearts. They'll be hoping that some of their pacier players may be able to press home an advantage here at the end of the first half on a warmish night in Darwin. On the right side, Nalur, Bimali, able to step through two players. He's got great close control with those long legs. And Oshun Bimali puts it wide right with the shot. He's a great player on the ball, isn't he, John? Yeah, technically very, very good. Again, he's not afraid to take on a player. He's that player that's got that X factor. So again, he gets any space outside that box and he can see the goal. He'll have a, he'll have a ping, no doubt. 22-year-old, Nepalese. Says his biggest achievement in football was winning promotion last season with Darwin Hearts. They turn and go again. Nalur. He's got company in Nero Shrestha. Able to dink across in and it's knocked down. The chance is blocked away. Mamun de game denied. And Port Darwin able to get numbers back and scramble it clear. But not a surprise that it was Nero again, the creator. Can he do it again? He's fouled this time. And a free kick over on that right side. Once again, though, it's Niro Shreshtha who is causing all sorts of headaches. And so a free kick. Port Darwin trying to organise here. They've put three in the wall. So they want to, if nothing else, obscure the view as it's drifted to the edge of the six-yard box and off the post and then scrambled away. Chance after chance, but they haven't been able to score. They have hit the crossbar and both the right and left hand post in this half now. And Mohamed Al Saleh can't believe that this ball won't go in. His glancing header, flush off the post. And then Durabakaki, the ball caught him by surprise. He couldn't turn it in. And now it's not quite out of danger. Dominic Price parrying the ball up and then it's scrambled clear, but John, chaos. And Darwin Hearts have been utterly luckless in this first half. Yeah, three, three good chances. Obviously, they've rattled the, the woodwork three times now. So, again, they're still persisting with it. They're still trying to find that breakthrough. And, again, it's, it's, it's that right-hand side that's causing that damage. And, again, just up from that one there, off a set piece there. So, they're, they're menacing and everything. But here come Port Darwin now down to the other end. And this is all on the initiative of... Roberto Cicles, the Italian, drops the shoulder, tries to go through the left side, he's legged. And the referee says, legally, took the ball and a bit of the man. And so the Massimo Macarone look-alike is going to have to settle for a corner as we have a look here at that run. He got past Bimali, and there's a closer look at the tackle that came in from Kassem Rakane. So they've had a number of corners. They have all been from this left side, suiting the in-swinger from a right footer. They've honed in on the near post each time, and this is no exception, and the goalkeeper has got wise to how they are attacking. Hearts on the ball, and just another little attempt to foul, and then a far more solid bit of contact coming through there from Declan O'Shea. I to say that uh, I think Mahmoud de Game can perhaps feel a little aggrieved that it wasn't a foul the first time and it meant he got clattered the second. Throw in taken. And Bukana Nalur just willed himself onto the ball. And again, more no nonsense defending from Jay Adams on this occasion as the Port Darwin defenders take it in turns to guard out on the wing.
So Darwin Hart. Throw in coming from the left side. And now popped out for referee's decision is a corner. Corner kick. Knocked to the left side and then blocked away again. Bacana and Allure appealing for a handball, maybe a little ambitiously. And so it will be another corner. Just wonder if Darwin Hart's having done so much stylish and entertaining attacking in this first half might have a bit more joy if they just bundle one in by any means necessary. At the bottom of this corner kick. And it bends beyond the edge of the box. And Port Darwin attempting to go end to end. Neat little back heel from sick legs. Bending out to the right side. Kogai tried to slide through Masai. Darwin Hearts have got to be careful here. Just a little bit ponderous on the ball. And eventually they're going to clear. Mamoun to game. Twisting and turning. Able to create himself some space. Mohamed Al Saleh. A lucky deflection. It's breaking for him. He tries to go central. And it's going to sit up briefly. Defenders getting in each other's way. And now from the ground. Well, nearly a gift for Darwin Hearts. And it went out. What's the referee saying? Looks like it might be a judge to have been a goal kick in the end. When the goalkeeper, Dominic Price, didn't have clean hands, it was back into the path of a prone Mohamed Al Saleh, and he nearly got the chance to put it in. Here it is. Well, maybe it's a, been a judge to foul there by Mbakana Nalua in order to spill the ball there. It's a restart going the way of Port Darwin regardless. More chaos in their penalty area. Crossfield pass. Mamoun de Game has been very busy as this half has gone on. Into the middle, Durbakaki through the right side, off to the races. This is Nero Shrestha. It's take two against Price. This time he keeps his feet. And the goalkeeper slides in and puts the ball behind. But, well, it was deja vu there for Dominic Price charging off his line. And he again tried to go the body of Nero Shrestha. But he didn't quite make as menacing contact as earlier on in the half. And so then we wait for what looks like yet another corner kick deep in this first half. Short corner, swung into the box, good header away. Now a chance to counter-attack for Port Darwin. Sickles lays it back, trusted Weafa to get the ball to him. Now into the middle, Jonah Rua, caught in possession. And it nearly broke kindly for Daxon Masai, but goalkeeper Jordan Stobart was awake to the danger. the game. Al Saleh dispossessed this time before he could work any of his magic. Port Darwin through the right side. Ahead of steam building up here for Daxon Masai. Now John Dean. It runs on. We offer. Rule. And his pass unable to find a teammate. And the referee is Giving a yellow card here for an earlier tackle. 
and it's also marking half time so just trying to work out here there must have been a grab and so as we see the captain Kasim Rakain protesting but that is the first booking of the game he'll have to be on his best behavior in the second half it's been great entertainment all we're missing is a goal Darwin Hearts rattled the woodwork no less than three times hitting both posts and the crossbar and yet at half time it is Darwin Hearts nil Port Darwin nil keep watching this live stream because we've got John Tamburis and the halftime show coming up very shortly leave a comment leave a question I'll get to them in the second half. Your halftime show is coming up now.
Wow. That was a, a hard... Well, there was a few players out there with their cranky pants on, John. Uh, my name is Bruce Stalder. This is half time here in the Men's Premier League here in Darwin. Uh, in the Northern Territory, top end, we are the safest place in the country and therefore for the second week in a row, we are the only place in Australia where football is being played and certainly one of the only places in the world where football is being played in front of a crowd. And the crowd tonight, John, have been really involved. Every kick, every tackle, every balanced move or, any <laughs> or unbalanced move, they're in on it. So how did you sort of take that first half uh again it took what listening to the crowd as well you know they're very very vocal which again helps their their, their teams as well so yep. obviously watching that first half i thought uh, first probably 10 minutes i thought heart settled was the, was the first team to settle in that in that first 10 minutes um port down as the as the game went on they they, they looked to settle and get more and more into the game again uh you know you talk about chances uh hearts chances they had three three i think they hit the post three times tonight Again, a bit unlucky on, on the last one, I think. But um, Pricey, their goalkeeper, uh, Port Darwin goalkeeper, has kept a minute tonight. And, and again, uh, I think um, in terms of uh, Port Darwin, you know, that, that final delivery in, when they get into that front third, it's just not, they're not really connecting well. So a lot of things that um, Lee has to address at half time. And again, I'll, I'll be saying, you know, in that front third, can we make things stick and can we get that final delivery in where it's supposed to be going? And speaking of the front third for Port Darwin, they've moved Robert Sickles over to, you know, the, the machine over to the left-hand flank. That once he had a bit more space, there seemed to be more purpose and, I guess, direction to their attack. To your point, there's still some loose balls going. They're not finding where they need to go to. I think also we need to make credit to Darwin Hart's back because those right and left backs have got, talking about engines, and uncompromising too, particularly his left back. I can't remember his first name, but he, he, you know when you're in a challenge with him. So as a defender yourself uh, of many years, what are you seeing in both defensive lines in that half? And what do you expect from him in the second half, given that you think there's going to be some uh, amendments to the play from either Port or, or Hearts in that front third? Well, I spoke to Damon Audrey, which was the Hearts coach uh, yep. earlier today, and he was saying to me, you know, we've got a, a group of of dedicated players and you can see they're, they're playing as a team and they're working for each other and looking at their defensive well, both defenses i'm looking at hearts defense you know they're very compact yep they're quite quick on the wings as well so they get up and down that line yep so again and in the in the middle you've got two center halves that you know i know uh, center halves that will win their aerial duels same as port darwin you know you've got the the two boys in the middle of the park which we spoke about last week against yeah. um, when they played against casuarina you know, they're no-nonsense defenders. They'll win everything in the air. They'll, they'll win their tackles. They, they marshal the defence. So it's going to be, you know, interesting which defence is going to crack. At the moment, Hearts have, have had the better, better chances tonight. But again, you know, um, you know that final if they get that final delivery, Port Down might get one in the second half. Okay, Johnny, what we'll do is have a look at some of those chances. Guild Ed, some of them too. That uh, the post at the what we call the McMillan's Road end of uh, this stadium, Larrakia Park, was shaken. The remainder of this first half, which is goalless, but it's a game that feels like a goal could be coming at any moment in a shallow back pass. Sees Nalor in and he's been body checked heavily. By the remainder of this first half, which is goalless, but it's a game that feels like a goal could be coming at any moment in a shallow back pass. Sees Nalor in and he's been body checked heavily. Played by a poor first touch. Al Saleh through the left side, the right side. This is Shrestar. Oh, he's hit the post. And now. The follow-up goes out for a goal kick, so they've been... Lucky. It might be. Love his team to score here and break the deadlock. Long throw is a good weapon they've got. And this one is not an out. It might be. Love his team to score here and break the deadlock. Long throw is a good weapon they've got. And this one is not an out. It is organising his defence here corner again attacking the near post and this is Daxon oh he had the chance there this is Daxon Masai playing through Roberto Sicles a bit of space to work with here oh and he's over on the ball Port Darwin their eyes were lighting up on that on the right side Nalur Bimali able to step through two players he's got great close control with those long legs on the right side Nalur Bimali, able to step through two players. He's got great close control with those long legs. So they want to, if nothing else, obscure the view. As it's drifted to the edge of the six-yard box and off the post and then scrambled away. So they want to, if nothing else, obscure the view. As it's drifted 
to the edge of the six yard box and off the post and then scrambled away. And this is all on the initiative of Roberto Ciclés. The Italian drops the shoulder, tries to go through the left side, he's legged. And, and this is all on the initiative of Roberto Ciclés. The Italian drops the shoulder, tries to go through the left side, he's legged. And it's breaking for him, he tries to go central. And it's going to sit up briefly. Defenders getting in each other's way. And now from the ground, well, nearly a gift for Darwin Hearts. Through the right side, off to the races. This is Nero Shrestha. It's take two against Price. This time he keeps his feet. And the goalkeeper slides in and well, in puts the ball behind. In that highlights package, a lot of post-its, and I don't mean the ones you put on your fridge, mate. There was quite a few down in that corner there. Really interesting stuff. Listen, just very quickly, how's it working with Teo? I mean, what a legend. Oh, superstar. Uh, again, um, obviously, <laughs> I haven't met him personally, so looking forward to meeting him personally. But, again, working with him uh, tonight, it's been an absolute pleasure. Mate, it's only costing us a new Ferrari. <laughs> you know? So, hey, shout out to you, Tio. Great work. I'll get down there and had a good listen. I want to thank you, mate, for being part of the uh, live streaming. Listen, uh, this next half is going to have pretty much what we saw in the first half. We're going to have some amendments. Just want to point out quickly that... Uh, I, I can never get his name right, but on the right-hand side for Darwin Hearts, which is most of where the attack's been channelled, yep. he's lightning. Yeah, the, uh, I think it's uh, Neroy Shrishna. That's it. That's it, yep. yeah. Again, everything's coming from that right-hand side. Uh, I think he's wearing the number seven tonight. Yeah. Um, so in, in terms of set pieces, um, again, everything that's happening for Hearts is on that right-hand side. So I think that he's the go-to man for him. And I, I, I predict that Lee will be talking to his, uh, his left-side defender saying, hey, let's get a bit tighter because, you know, everything's come from that left-hand side. Saw that right hand side, so let's get a bit tighter there. Yeah, absolutely. And Neroy, don't worry, mate. Everyone calls me Stalder. It's okay. Um, I'm going to work hard at getting these pronunciations right. Where do we, we need Lucy from SBS. What a, what a star in that area. Anyhow, uh, or Simon last week, he was brilliant. Awesome. Called a, a game that had 18 different nationalities. Uh, yeah, I love football. It is diversity is our game, as we say. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into this second half. We have a nil all score line. John, I'm going to ask you for a prediction. Oh, I spoke to Tio before the game and I said one all. So, uh, nil all, I'm pretty close, but I can see, um, obviously, I can see a couple of goals going in the second half. I think you're right, John. I think also what we will definitely see is excitement and plenty of energy and frenzy in the last 10 minutes of this half. Okay, sit back, put your seatbelt on and enjoy. This is Men's Premier League in Darwin, in Northern Territory, the top end of Australia. So we're back here in the second half, currently scoreless between Port Darwin and Darwin Hearts. And in this second half, Port Darwin are going from right to left, and they're trying to start the second half with a goal, stinging the fingertips of the goalkeeper, Jordan Stobart. And that would have been the ideal way to get the action 
back and flying. But as we see here, leaving the ball for the shot. And John Dean thought he'd scored. Took a good parry to send it over the top and out for an early corner kick. So Port Darwin out of the blocks. Trying to break the deadlock here. In the Facebook comments, Peter says, Enjoying the match from cold Melbourne. Great to have football back. It's a national and international audience enjoying this game. But they'd love a goal even more as we see this header turned out for a goal kick. And so the danger is relieved briefly for Darwin Hearts. Julian in the comments saying, The way Siclairs plays is so smooth. Very entertaining player. Very fancy. Roberto Siclairs wearing the number nine for Port Darwin, who are in the checkered shirts. Darwin Hearts in possession here. Jacob Meek. Can't get it out of his defensive half. On the right side, Port Darwin can't keep it in through Daxon Masai. So it will be a throw in at right back. Just a reminder that Port Darwin yet to pick up a point in competition so far this season. Sitting at the foot of the six team table in football NT. Darwin Hearts with one win so far. At the moment, Kaz Marina and Mindil Aces have the perfect records. Six points from six. As we see Port Darwin here. Bit of a dangerous pass into the middle from Joseph Wiafa. Wi-Fi, as his teammates call him. They're going to try and use him here again. He has scored two goals so far this season, but we didn't see much of him in the first half. Nero Shrestha. Are they going to be able to defend him a bit better in this second half? Now Mohamed Al Saleh. Back to Nero Shrestha. And it's nicked off his toes at the last second. And that's well done by Jay Adams to keep it tight. Swept forward, Daxon Masai. Center of the pitch, Jonah Rule. Sends it to the right. And on this occasion, the pass is misdirected. Darwin's goalkeeper, Dominic Price, had a few nervous moments in that first half. Certainly quick off his line to come out and grab the ball or try to make a contest against the man. Dean. Now Sickles, directing traffic. Trying to make something happen for his Port Darwin team. Sweeping pass into the middle of the pitch. Darwin Hart's able to work it out. Combination of Sadip Padel. And a shallow back pass here. Stop out had to come out. Daxon Masai lurking. It's been all Port Darwin at the start of this second half. Darwin Hart's heads may be still in the rooms. Can they switch on here? Got to defend against Roberto Siclez. Trying to do it all himself. And Jacob Meek comes across and sweeps it behind for a corner kick. And John Tamburis, this second half, it's been one-way traffic for the first five minutes. It has. It has, Theo. And, and the message from Lee, uh, Lee Edison, which is Port Darwin's coach, was, you know, I want a bit more from his, one of his players. You know, he wanted a bit more from his players in terms of energy levels, and he wanted that, that final pass in that final third to stick and, and try and find a player. So you can see, you know, their intentions in the second half, they're, they're trying, to, trying to get a goal here. And 
obviously that half-time break has, has done them a world of good. They've come out with some real energy as the initial corner doesn't quite stay in the penalty area, sliding off the head of Roberto Cicles. And so now it will be Port Darwin throw in over on the left and this actually came up in the comments on Facebook in the first half. John Dean's long throw. He's got a great arm on him. Let's see if he can turn this into some more danger here. Off the long run up and hurling it to the edge of the six yard box. But the up and under header from Declan O'Shea is unable to come to anything meaningful. This ball goes out for a goal kick. Declan O'Shea, 31. Apparently he's nicknamed Confucius. So he must be the, uh, the philosopher of the Port Darwin team. Hart's on the ball, but Duda Bakaki is dispossessed quickly. Now Joseph Wiafa. Swept into the middle, Sikles chesting it down. And the long shot coming and always rising there from Jonah Rule. 17-year-old central midfielder. He's been a very prominent part of the game, but John on this occasion, he had the space, but he couldn't keep it down. Yeah, again, I've worked with Jonah in, in, in terms of talent ID squads and so forth. So, uh, young promising player, again, gets that space outside the box. He's not afraid to have a crack and obviously just got under it a little bit there. But again, good intentions and, and Port Darwin are looking good in the second half. Darwin Hart's yet to show us any of the speed and flair that characterised their attacking in the first 45 minutes. And that's because Port Darwin have owned the ball. And they get another chance here. We offer to Daxon Masai. And he's straight offside. And a promising attack breaks down because he lost his bearings on where the defenders were. Bit of a tight call for the assistant referee, Jacinta Misob, over on the outer side. Now as we see this ball blocked away here, Darwin Hearts with only the briefest foray down into their attacking half. If you've only joined this live stream during the second half, the teams at the moment, Darwin Hearts, Jordan Stobart, their goalkeeper, three, and Bukana Nalua, 14, Jacob Meek, four, Durba Kaki, five, Sadip Padel, six, Kasem Rakane, seven is Niraj Shreshla, eight, Mohamed Al Saleh, 10, Mahmoud Degame, 11, Sajal Shreshla, and 21 is Osim Bimali. As Darwin Hearts now get a free kick in their attacking half, so a chance to finally have the ball down at their attacking end. Port Darwin team, Dominic Price, their goalkeeper, two, Declan O'Shea, three, Tobias Koge, four, Dylan Quinn, five, Jay Adams, six, Jonah Rule. We'll come back to their team in a moment after this set piece. Dealt with initially by the Port Darwin defence. And it will be cleared from right back. Roberto Sicler is coming very deep to help out. And now at right back, Tobias Koge. Continuing through that Port Darwin team, seven is Yanni Casales, eight John Dean, nine Roberto Stickles, ten Joseph Wiafa, and eleven is Daxon Masai. That is John Dean on the ball, combining with Jonah Rule, and just hugging the touchline a little too tight as the ball strays out. Sicles really determined to make something happen. Swinging the ball through the left side. We offer. Can't cut it back to a teammate. 
Not a good pass. It was blocked by the near man. And now emerging is Mohamed Al Saleh. Driving a long ball. Keep it out of his line here. Dominic Price had to go roaming. And so Nero Shresh, though, quick to take the throw in. Nalua able to escape his marker. Mbakana Nalua. His cross swings through the area, backtracking Mamun de game. And then no control on the ball from Osubamali this time. Slide challenge coming in. Mohamed Al Saleh won't give up on this passage of play. Port Darwin able to keep the ball though. Twisting and turning, Al Saleh trying to make something happen. And so now, John, I ask you, have Darwin Hearts absorbed the best shot of Port Darwin? Is it their turn to go and do some attacking? Well, it certainly seems so. The last two minutes, you can see Darwin Hart are starting to come into this game again. So, again, it's going to be a seesawing affair, I think. Um, and again, it's, it's who's going to score that one goal? I, don't, I think we're going to see five or six goals tonight. I think we're going to I think one goal is going to do it tonight. And it could be either team. So it's going to be an interesting um, end to this game. Clearance from Price. Port Darwin unable to escape their defensive half initially. Now Rakain putting pressure on, but good control of the ball from Jonah Rule. We are for. He's been far more prominent in this second half. We've almost seen more of him in the first 10 minutes than we did in the first 45. He's able to hold off his marker and get it to Dean. Cross comes in. There was late contact on him. Referee let it slide. Goalkeeper took care of business inside the area. And now Rakain. Long ball. Mum into game with the step over. Getting the wows of the crowd. And the ball goes out for a throw. Now it's O'Shea's turn to clear. We offer, knocking it down. Quick one, two. Daxon Masai caught behind his defender there. Oh, it's taken a deflection. Lack of communication there, almost resulting in disaster. But it's all's well that ends well. And the apology comes there. In the end, it was that deflected clearance that nearly came so unstuck Sanjal Shresh though making the apology and so now Port go on the attack again Roberto Cicles he's given space he decides to defer we offer and he balloons the cross. It's an anti-climax. Interesting decision there. I thought Roberto Cicles might have shot himself, John. Again, he does have it in his locker room. He's got that lethal left foot. So, again, ever since he's been put out on that, le on that right-hand side, he's, he's looking to come in and looking to link up with his, with his nine and his, and his other winger as well. So, again, very dangerous player, Roberto. So, you give him time and space and you know, space outside that box. He won't hesitate to have a shot. Just on that occasion, he looked at playing his teammate through. Looks like we might have a sub coming up here. 
just waiting to get some eyes on exactly what's taking place with the sub, though. There we go. There's the change coming. Santosh Shrestha is coming on. So he's into the game. And so is Shrowan Shrestha. And, of course, it's a very common name in Nepal. They're not related players, but we've now got the number seven, Niroj Shrestha, and also number 12, Santosh Shrestha, and number 17, Shrowan Shrestha. On, so we might go with first names when it becomes absolutely necessary if they're all passing the ball to one another. Right now it's Mbakana Nalua who is in possession. Can't shrug the tackle and keep the ball though. And he goes tumbling out of the way theatrically. But Port Darwin emerged with the ball. Siklets. Holds up at the right byline, but Jacob Meek is able to watch it safely over and out for a goal kick. So we're still waiting on a first goal in this game. And there was a real hectic energy to the way Darwin Hearts attacked in that first half, but it's all disappeared at the moment. So, John, maybe these subs can bring a bit of uh, freshness and a bit of spark back to their play. Uh, again, I hope so, Tio. You know, conditions, again, will we'll, we'll get the best of some of these players now. Obviously, you know, in terms of pre-season and in terms of preparing for the restart of our beautiful game, we, you know, there was no contact. So basically, we only had two weeks to get players and teams ready to play. So conditions will play a factor tonight. And again, um, you know, uh, players on, on, on the benches will come in and, and do their job. And I always say, if you've got a good bench, they will sometimes win your games like this. So it'll be very, very interesting what subs are made and when they're made tonight. There is one of the subs, Shrowan Shrestha, backing back into position after an offside call stopped his team's latest attack. Ganesh saying, watching live on TV, the NT Football League and supporting Darwin Hearts, our local Nepalese team. All the best, boys. Facebook comments coming through. The one on one duel here between Niroj Shrestha and his marker is able to prevail and do quite well there. Yanni Casalis, the big knee brace. Long ball. Rule. On the right, Siklez. This time he does load up and he's. Sent that sky high and nowhere near the target. And he apologises to his teammates as it goes out for a goal kick. Julian in the comments says, Prediction, 65th minute. He reckons the goal will come for Port Darwin. So it's still a few minutes away, plenty of time. And you can see a conversation is taking place on the bench there for Port Darwin. Their coach, Lee Addison. One of his assistants just brainstorming about what they might need to do. They haven't turned to the bench themselves just yet. In traffic, Sikles denied possession. Osimbimali. Breaking into the attacking half and then shut down. Unable to progress for Darwin Hearts. Possession is gifted back though. O'Shea. Brought down by Wiafa. Great close control. And then his pass isn't able to match. And he appeared to go in over the ball there a little bit. Play continues and... Out it goes. Again, it's getting a bit scrappy now, as you can see, Tio. Uh, you know, a few misled passes, uh, you know, tackles flying in. 
So it looks like fitness is starting to play a big part in this game. So it wouldn't be surprised if both coaches start looking to their benches. Right on cue, Daxon Masai is feeling a bit sore. I think he did the, the little universal symbol for a sub there, the little twirl of the fingers. And as he favours his hamstring, it looks as though his night is coming to an end. Had one chance in the first half, wasn't able to do much with it. We've got to see who he's being replaced by here. There we go. The number 16 is coming on, Isaac Paul. So it's the end of the night for Daxon Masai. And Isaac Paul is his replacement. Ball goes out for a corner almost immediately. Isaac Paul, only 17 years old. Another youngster playing in this Port Darwin team. And so as they try to capitalise on their territorial dominance in this second half. Port Darwin corner, right into a pack of players. And even though they are appealing for another corner, they're not going to get it. It is out for a goal kick. We got more changes coming here. Got to wait and see who's being subbed though. We've got the number nine, Biomi Ane, waiting to come on. He does have a goal for Darwin Hearts this season. So they're going to energise their attack. And it looks like it might actually be Mamoun Game who came off there. And he'd been pretty good in an attacking sense. So we'll see if Biomi Ane can bring a goal-scoring touch to Darwin Hearts because they have faded badly out of this game in the second half. This is Isaac Paul, dispossessed immediately. His first touch of the ball. Trying to keep pressure on in the attacking half was Dean, but he can't take possession. And the referee appears to be calling... Is this a drinks break? Or have we got a bit of an incident here? Declan O'Shea. It's being warned about something by the referee, Ben Kivert. John Tamburis, do you have any idea what this might be all about? Uh, I think there's a bit of a, a bit of a scuffle behind the play there. Again, no one got tangled up with the big defender there, so again. All part and parcel of the game, mate, so we get to see that most of the time, so nothing new. It seems as though that uh, little discussion with the referee was a precursor to a drinks break, which effectively marks us at three quarters of the way through tonight's action. And I hate to say it, John, but it feels like we've, we've drifted further away from a goal than towards a goal as this second half has uh, gone on. Exactly. Um, again, Port Darwin came out, came out of the second half. They, they looked like they had the initiative the first 10 minutes especially. But as I said, in terms of you know, the weather, that's going to probably play a factor in this game as well. Uh, players' fitness as well. So again, some of these players will be feeling it a bit now. So they might be content with just going home with a point tonight. So I'm not surprised the way Port Darwin have set up in the second half. Um, speaking to lead their coach at halftime. He obviously wanted more from his players, and he's got, he's got a bit of a response in the second half. So hopefully, as I said before, hopefully we get one goal, and I think one goal is going to do it tonight. The question is, who's going to score that goal? Well, I think I speak for all the neutrals enjoying uh, this game, that they won't be going home happy with a point if it's a nil-all draw. I think that at some point we want to see the initiative taken and a goal. The question is, will one team take the necessary risks in order to score it? Paul plays it to Weafa. And he's knocked to the ground, and it's a shooting chance, perhaps, right at the edge of shooting distance with a free kick here. 
And this is going to be Darwin Hart's on alert once again, defending a set piece. As you can see, the goalkeeper, Jordan Stobart, setting the defensive wall. Just the two. Jonah Rule, who has tried his luck from distance with some long shots tonight. Is he going to do something similar here, or will he just drift it in? He's going to go with the shot in the end, and it doesn't quite have the pace to trouble Stobart in goal. Darwin Hart's trying to escape their defensive half. Nero Shrestha, that's a great pass, but couldn't quite find it all the way through. And Bakala Nalur is trying to make it work. Able to win possession back. Oh, and he's been legged. And it's got the fans up at about two. Yellow card coming here. Referee had no choice in the end. And that was great defending from the front there, John, from Mbakala Nalur. Again, made something out of nothing there and again used his pace to his advantage and obviously drew the foul. It's looking quite pacey up front and again fresh legs so hopefully it gives him the spark that Hart, Hart needed in the second half. So Nalua has won the free kick. Uh, it looks as though it's Pimali who is going over to take it. Like all their set pieces tonight, they do not crowd the keeper. They don't put players in the six-yard box. Darwin Hearts, they all like to drift around the edge of the penalty area. Biomi Ane has had more conversations with the referee than he has had touches of the ball since getting subbed on here. Again, stuck in another dialogue with the ref. A lot of work to do for Ben Kivert, but we're ready to restart play, and it's a short ball. Niro Shrestha, right into the mixer, Biomi Ane, and he couldn't get a shot off. The ball bobbled up on him, and he ended up swinging at fresh air. And that was his chance to be the super sub and score a goal. He couldn't take it. Now Port Darwin, we offer. This is Isaac Paul, the sub, looking quick. Back to Iafa, and it takes a deflection, and that looked like it went behind. Dare I paraphrase Brian Taylor, that was out of bounds. But no, the assistant referee will trust their view hard up against the line, and so it's booted away. O'Shea, physical contact. His battle with Biomi Ane has become one of the more intriguing subplots of this second half. And now Port trying to attack. Paul, he's become a real threat and live wire in this Port Darwin attack. Meek trying to get out of the defensive half and that slide challenge is going to bring a foul. Is the referee reaching for his book again? He is. And so the yellow cards are now starting to come thick and fast. We've seen Quinn and Adams go into the book in the last couple of minutes. They only have the three yellow cards for the whole game, but maybe discipline could become a factor as this game goes on, neither side will want to go down to 10 men. Long ball. Dealt with immediately by the Port Darwin defence. Dean. Rule. This young man is starting to really run the game. He's taken over in central midfield. Out to the left side, Casales. We offer. Can they get the cutting edge? He's going to shoot from distance and bend it and dip it. 
but not with nearly enough menace to worry the keeper. Ooh, leading feet first and getting to the ball. The whistle's gone. Biomi and A was played in, but offside. Might have been a high boot there by Nalur as well. As we take another look at it, up he went. And even if that was legal, as you can see there, even from our camera angle, Biomi and A had drifted offside. Interesting end-to-end -end passage of play, John, and I think the decision-making of Port Darwin is now becoming a problem. They've got no shortage of attack, but it just seems that final decision on a pass or a shot seems to be lacking at the moment. Exactly, Theo. We spoke about it before um, in terms of their final delivery in the box or that final pass or whatever it is, if it's a shot or it's a pass, it's just letting them down at the moment. So they're getting in good positions, they're getting in that final third, but it's just that last passage of play is what's letting them down. It's been their half. It hasn't had the quality of chances that the first half had, though. If you've only joined us during the second half, Darwin Hart's hit both posts and the crossbar in the first 45 minutes. And this game has taken a, a significant turn in the second 45. Sajal Shresh, though, will get us back underway. Hunting it down the field. Through the right side, Port Darwin go. Some real pace. And then the cross into the box is going to sweep past everyone. We are able to win the ball back. Dean, we know he's got a long shot on him, but he can't get it to a teammate here. And then it's cooked out for a goal kick. Once again, execution in that final third is the question mark for Port Darwin. Sajal. Headed by O'Shea. Dean. With the fall of the ball, Podell. And he just shanks it out for a throw. Now possession given away. Casales quick to back chat and backtrack I should say and get out of the vicinity go and resume his defending sub coming up and it's for Port Darwin and it is John Dean coming off he's had a very busy game and he's left it all out on the pitch and he's replaced by Matthew Peters and I, I wonder John will that just take a bit of bite out of the midfield though Dean has been key to a lot of the aggression and a lot of the initiative of that Port Darwin midfield Exactly, Tio. And, you know, JD plays, obviously wears his heart on his sleeve. He, he plays a type of football that, you know, very aggressive. Um, he, he, he gets the boys going in the middle of the park. You know, he's the engine room in there. He's the one that lays the first tackle. So, you know, they'll miss that spark from him. So hopefully um, the substitute that's come in now will, will do the job. Well, he's going to get a chance to show his wares here. This is Matthew Peters, first involvement off the bench. Plays it to Weafa. Shallow back pass. And then going in with uh, a raised boot. The apology comes from Casales because he's given away a free kick. And Darwin Hartz, who've been on the defensive for so much of this second half, are now trying to turn the tables and take the lead. They have committed some numbers forward here. The driven free kick, and it's been rolled in. Super sub, Biomi and A has got the goal. I must say it was a bizarre goal in its construction. A driven free kick that just seemed to hold up on the turf. It rolled into the path of Biomi and A. He couldn't miss his second goal of the season. 
and it could be so important for Darwin Hearts because they've taken the lead against the run of play and he bows to the crowd and says, you're welcome. John Tamboris, it was a bizarre goal. He just caught everyone flat-footed and was able to walk in the back of the net. It was, it was, you know, and we spoke about before how, how good the defensive duo is in the centre-back position for Port Darwin. So everything in the air, they've, they've won everything in the air today. So something different, obviously set-piece on the ground, they switched off and obviously got, got the result. So again, they'll be, they'll be livid, to be honest, the, the back four for, for Port Darwin. But again, great finish. And the big man, since he's come on, he's put himself about and, you know, all credit to him, he, he deserved that goal. Well, he had a great chance not too long before. He's been physical. He's been in the referee's ear. And now, Biomi A has put himself on the score sheet. And that's the most important thing of all. And so the question now is Port Darwin, with their control of the game in this second half, can they turn it into a goal? Can they find an equaliser? Can they make John Tambouris' pre-match prediction of one all come true? We're going to swing the ball in here, cleared away. Now the follow-up, and it's going to rather tamely bounce out for a goal kick. If we take another look at the goal, it was a driven free kick by Niro Shrestha. And Biomi and A just able to stroll in and put it in, I should say, Shrowan Shrestha taking the free kick. So it was a goal with an assist from a sub and scored by a sub and you've got to give all the credit then to the coach Damon Aldrit knowing the right rein to pull in order to get fresh legs on the field and create a goal Port Darwin looking for a response Time is becoming their enemy. It has had the feeling of a game that might only be decided by the odd goal. On the right side, sick legs. Slips over at the key moment. Able to bounce back up and keep the ball. And now the assistant referee is flagging. It's a free kick. Sick legs thought about taking it quickly, but he's going to wander into the penalty area and Port Darwin uh, going to try and make the most of this set piece. Daniel Jefferson in the comments on Facebook saying, Port Darwin misses me. Watching from Adelaide. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Your team needs you. Daniel. And Ganesh says, well done, boys. Love you all from Melbourne. Of course, there's a huge Nepalese population in Melbourne as well. At a club called Reservoir Yeti. And would no doubt be watching tonight. Free kick. Driven in at the near post. And it's turned behind for a corner kick. Uh, we're looking for equalizer. But let's look at the crowd tonight. As we've heard in our pre-game and halftime show, everyone's enjoying the chance to get out and about. In stark contrast to many other places in Australia, we can have sporting crowds and people getting in and enjoying the game. Darwin Hart's trying to counter-attack another pile-up of bodies. And on this occasion, it's Sudip Padel who's knocked over Port Darwin resume their pursuit of an equaliser rule he hasn't stopped trying swung high into the box from Cichlids we offer can't keep it at his feet and Padel sees it out Time is becoming the enemy of Port Darwin. Another sub taking place here. And Darwin Hearts are going to bring 
Another fresh player on here. This time it's Hussain Bakarat. Wearing the number 19 shirts. And we've discussed at length the different nationalities and heritages represented in this game. Through the left side, Darwin Hart's trying to find a second to put this game to bed. And it's cleared away. It's going to say Hussein Bakarat, Lebanese. Great little step over. Bimali intercepted at centre back. Port Darwin again on the attack. Intercepted by Sajal. Sweeping onto the chest of Casales. And he's going the wrong way as far as Port Darwin are concerned. Peters. Darwin Hearts defending for their lives. And now the flag is up for offside. Biomi Ane, he's had a couple since coming on, but he's also got the only goal. On the right wing now, Isaac Paul. Referee had a perfect view there of the challenge coming in from Bimali, and it's a legal one. And now through the middle. Rakeem, once, twice, putting a foot on the ball, standing his ground, riding the challenges. And we've got a player down here for Darwin Hearts, and it's Mbukana Nalur, who has been on the end of a lot of physical treatment tonight. Go back to that moment in the first half when he got wiped out by the Port Darwin goalkeeper is kept his energy high for the entire game he may not have scored but he's been key to Darwin Hearts tonight Through ball, Isaac Paul, is this the chance? It goes just wide. So, so close, Isaac Paul, he's been so good since coming off the bench. But he couldn't get the slice of luck there, and John Tambor, as that might have been Port Darwin's chance to get a share of the points. Yeah, I think so too, mate. Um, in terms of great, great opportunity, again, great ball in as well. Split the defence. Thought, he, thought he, the chip was there to, to, to go in there, but obviously ran across the goals and that could be their final chance tonight. Perhaps would have been a fitting reward for him given how good he's been since coming into this game. He's totally transformed the way that Port Darwin have attacked. And they'll come out of this game, if they are three losses from three, they will lament their inability to gel in that front third no shortage of possession no shortage of opportunity but just a lack of understanding between their attackers and they certainly had to ride their luck in the first half Darwin Hearts could have been well clear rather than needing a late goal to get this result should it stand up It hasn't quite been the goal fest of previous rounds, but it has been good entertainment. And the goal scorer here, Biomi Ane, is dispossessed and he goes to the ground. Port Darwin emerged with the ball. They're running out of chances. Is this their last hurrah? Right into the mixer they go, and it's good goalkeeping there from Stobart to bring the ball safely to ground. And he just wraps it up and falls on it. And now he's going to boot it out because his teammate, Biomi Ane, who is still down. 
and he, he just knows how to play the game. He came on. He got straight under the skin of Declan O'Shea. He put himself about, and you can see there a little bit of gamesmanship. I think he wants the trainer to run all the way across the pitch to treat him. Look at the look on the referee's face, Ben Kavite. I think he knows what's up. And as a, a trainer ambles across with the can of magic spray. Look at that, he's smiling on the ground, he loves it. Biomi and A, he's been the hero of the game tonight. He's been the story of the game tonight. And, well, I hope that's not a, an injury. I almost hope it is gamesmanship because he's been... He's been everything you could want to bring entertainment off the bench into this match. Tell you what, if he is injured, it's an Achilles. So, for his sake, I hope he's all right. And he's, he's lowered off the pitch here in an absolute state. Well, doesn't look good. I hope he's okay. Are they even going to make another sub? Are they going to sub the sub here, Darwin Hearts? <laughs> Booted long by Stobart. Crowds whistling. They want full time. Bimali, back pass, inviting on the Port Darwin players, but they don't have the numbers pressing the ball. It's down the wrong end for them. They need to go end to end here. Peters. Crowd calling to the referee. They want the whistle, but it's not forthcoming. Port Darwin need to just get it in the box. Rule. One last long shot. And it was never dipping in time. Out it goes for a goal kick. We'll take another look here. Not for the first time tonight. He had a pop, but wasn't able to keep it down. Stobart taking plenty of time. over this goal kick. Cichlids. It's a throw in. He's wasting no time at all. Ball runs to the top of the box. A deflection shot. It wrong footed the goalkeeper initially, but unable to beat him. Booted away. And that is the full-time whistle. It's over. Darwin Hearts get the win. And their injured hero is Biomi Ane. You can see him on the far left of your screen. The fans are happy. But it's his goal, the super sub, that has decided this contest. And you can hear the chants of Darwin Hearts. They're happy tonight. Their second win of the season. And Port Darwin will be left to lament. A narrow defeat. Not for a lack of opportunity. John Tamburus, I'll give you the final word on Darwin Hearts 1, Port Darwin nil. Yeah, again, deserved. I thought Darwin Hearts were unlucky not to go up 3 nil up in, in the first half. Obviously, they hit the post three or four times in the first half. So, look, 
we said it tonight. I, I actually predicted a one all draw, but the way the game was going, whoever was going to score that, that goal was going to win it. And at the end, Darwin Hart, uh, through a set piece, uh, scored that, that goal. That, and, you know, credit to him, 1-0 and, and a clean sheet, which is a, a great thing uh, for the defensive uh, back four as well. So Damon Audit will be ecstatic. And you can see him there congratulating his team. So Biomi Ane scores the only goal. And it was Shrawan Shrestha with the assist as well from a free kick. So a goal created off the bench. And there he is. He's up and walking. So he's all right. Thankfully, not a serious injury for Biomi Ane, the hero tonight for Darwin Hearts. Big thanks to John Tamburis. Big thanks to Sportscast Australia, our production crew tonight. And on behalf of everyone involved in bringing you this live action for Football Northern Territory, my name is Teo Pelizzeri. Thank you for your company and good night. Yeah, same again. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to Larrakia Park. This is the home of Darwin Football Stadium, the home of football here in the Northern Territory. Uh, we just saw an end-to-end -end pulsating game of football. It had a winner in the end, but there was just so many opportunities for both sides to increase the scores. Uh, we'll hear from the coach shortly from Port Darwin. We'll hear from one of the goal scorers, well, the goal scorer from Darwin Hearts. We'll also hear from our expert panellists. But in the meantime, let's just have a quick look at some of the highlights of second half there. Darwin Hearts versus Port Darwin. The remainder of this first half, which is goalless, but it's a game that feels like a goal could be coming at any moment. And a shallow back pass sees Nalur in, and he's been body checked heavily. By the remainder of this first half, which is goalless, but it's a game that feels like a goal could be coming at any moment. And a shallow back pass sees Nalur in, and he's been body checked heavily. Played by a poor first touch. Al Saleh through the left side, the right side. This is Shrestar. Oh, he's hit the post. And now. The follow-up goes out for a goal kick, so they've been lucky. It might be. Love his team to score here and break the deadlock. 
Long throw is a good weapon they've got. And this one is not a doubt there it the might be. Love his team to score here and break the deadlock. Long throw is a good weapon they've got. And this one is not a doubt it is organising his defence here. Corner again attacking the near post. And this is Daxon. Oh, he had the chance there. This is Daxon Masai playing through Roberto Sicler. There's a bit of space to work with here. Oh, and he's overrun the ball, Port Darwin. Their eyes were lighting up on that. On the right side, Nalur. Bimali. Able to step through two players. He's got great close control with those long legs. On the right side, Nalur. Bimali. Able to step through two players. He's got great close control with those long legs. So they want to, if nothing else, obscure the view as it's drifted to the edge of the six-yard box and off the post and then scrambled away. So they want to, if nothing else, obscure the view as it's drifted to the edge of the six-yard box and off the post and then scrambled away. And this is, and this is all on the initiative of Roberto Ciclés, the Italian. Drops the shoulder, tries to go. It's breaking for him. He tries to go central. And it's going to sit up briefly. Defenders getting in each other's way. And now from the ground. Through the right side. Darwin are going from right to left. And they're trying to start the second half with a goal. Stinging. Now Joseph Wiafa. Swept into the middle. Sicles chesting it down. And the long shot coming and always rising there. Now Joseph Wiafa. Swept into the middle, Sicles chesting it down. And the long shot coming and always rising there. Pass, but Could. Ben Kivert, but we're ready to restart play, and it's a short ball. Niroz Shrestha, right into the mixer, Biomiane, and he couldn't get a shot off. Oh, leading feet. They have committed some numbers forward here. The driven free kick, and it's been rolled in. Super sub, Biomi and A has got the goal. I must say it was a bizarre goal in its construction. A driven free kick that just seemed to hold up on the turf. It rolled into the path of Biomi and A. He couldn't miss his second goal of the season. And it could be so important for Darwin Hearts because they've taken the lead against the run of play. Through ball, Isaac Paul, is this the chance? It goes just wide. So, so close, Isaac Paul, he's been so good. Rule, one last long shot. And it was never dipping in time. Well, wow, plenty of action in there. That's the highlights of the uh, game here. Um, as I said, lots of near misses, uh, one that went home. Um, both sides really gave their all. Plenty of energy out there. I'm sure our expert panellist, uh, John, will have something to say about that. But I first want to introduce Lee, coach of Port Darwin. Lee, it's a special day for you today because when you get your birthday at your age, the first thing you notice is you don't get any presents. So what did you get today from this game? No uh, presents? I'm sorry. Unfortunately, the result wasn't <laughs> our way. So that would have been the, the great gift of today. Um, I mean, to be honest, the, the guys obviously worked hard, and you can see that by the yeah. highlights, etc. Um, I'm just, I'm really gutted that we couldn't get the obviously the, the goal. Yep. We had our opportunities. Um, they just obviously didn't hit the back of that net. Well, happy birthday, mate. I'm going to hand over John in a minute, but I also wanted to mention that you know you're new to the role, and I've seen you know two games in in a week now, and I can see improvement already. So I can hear by your voice that you're um, <laughs> extracting them uh, and uh, fully and directly, um, which is fantastic. But John, you got a couple of questions there for Lee. Lee, just obviously watching the first half, they looked on top in the first half. They had some chances in terms of hitting the post three times. What was your message at half time when they came out because they looked a different team? Yeah, as soon as they come in, obviously I told them how uh, dissatisfied they were. Um, and, you, and just to express that we've got the, you know, we've got a lot of ability in the club, and to use it, um, the simple play, we just weren't doing it as you seen, um, and the guys didn't believe that they actually could put it away. Um, spoke with Roberto, uh, spoke to obviously a few of the guys, but just to express that you know to go out and enjoy the game, um, play the obviously this beautiful game, 
and hopefully we'll get the result. And, and watching, watching the second half, especially, you, you, you were on top in the second half. And then again, it, was, it wasn't as seesawing as the first half. But in terms of that, they got a set piece, they scored on that. But just watching the second half, um, again, you were the stronger team in the second half. And, you know, we've looked at, well, I looked at you last week against the champions, Casarino. You're creating those chances. You're getting into that final third. What do you think's letting you down in that final third? I mean, we, we just, it's, we, we know in the club, we know that our, our issues are generally to, to put it in the back of the net. That's our issues. We've been working hard and we've been recruiting, as you well know, uh, really well. We, we just, it's that final third, and obviously to put it away. And that is our issue. Uh, and we're working on that every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, and we've got guys who are interested in coming in who hopefully can actually give us that, that final finish. Uh, Lee, I just want to make mention before we let you go of Jonah Rule in the midfield there. I really, what I like about what you're trying to do and rebuild that side is you're giving youth a chance. And um, he's a baby, he's 17, yeah. and he'll make mistakes, but he is the future of the club. He looked really solid out there tonight. That's the second game I've seen him in a week. John, I'm sure you saw an improvement as well. So good signs ahead. Yeah, totally, yeah. I mean, Jonah obviously in the middle there. Uh, Jacob last Yes, uh, yes. Tobias. Yep. Um, all the future of the club. Yep. Uh, and obviously with Jacob, um, 100 games. Yeah. You know, for the club. He's worked all the way through. Yeah, and he's eight. And Jonah, yeah. <laughs> it's right. it's ridiculous. And Jonah, obviously, he's, he's, he's worked well. He came to me. He was really, really upset last week yeah. for not being in uh, starting. So he's come to me. He's expressed that. And I've said, look, you know, work well. Work well, in, in obviously, in the training. And he did. Um, so he deserves that. And yeah. I thought he played really, really well today. Well, Lee, on behalf of Football NT and behalf of the uh, followers of Darwin Football, we wish you all the best. It's only early days three. I know what we'll see in the future. It'll be a dedicated performance from the club. Definitely. The old uh, claret and blue do nothing less. No, exactly. Take care, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And happy birthday. Okay, that's Lee, the coach of Port Darwin. Uh, what we're going to do now is grab in um, the nickname for someone I call Hollywood. Uh, he got a goal tonight too, so um, uh, we shall hear about that in a minute. Um, this is... Uh, Came on as a sub, uh, and he's as quick as he is now getting to the seat. Um, hey, Bimey, how are you, mate? Good to see you. Good to see you back on the football pitch. Every time I talked to you between now and last year was an injury. First of all, overcome. How are you feeling? How's the body? Uh, still in injury. Yeah. Um, recovering. <laughs> I just fin uh, just come back from injury two years. Yeah. Again, I got injury uh, in, uh, at the training. So I'm going to take like three weeks or four weeks off again. Really? Yeah. Mate, it, 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 just before I throw to John, a, as an athlete, as a footballer, as someone who really prides himself on your speed and balance, that must be frustrating to be carrying those injuries. Uh, you know? Yeah, I know. That means posters are coming down from walls all over town <laughs> until you get back out on the pitch. Look, Hollywood, great to see you. Really nice Thanks. goal. What we expect from you. Johnny, got questions? Hey, um, just, uh, you came on, you unsettled those defenders. You threw yourself about. Um, again, you, you got into the defenders, um, into the defenders' faces. I saw you, you know, into the, the referees' face a couple of times. So you unsettled them a couple. Uh, you know, was that a ploy? Was that like a tactic to come in and unsettle the defenders? No, he was talking like bad word. Yes. I went to him. I talked to him. He don't, like he wouldn't listen. Yep. I called referee straight up yep. to deal with him. Okay. So again, part of parcel of the game in terms of you, you get that. So we, we understand that. And the finish. Talk us about the finish, mate. It was a good finish. Tell us what was going through your head as that ball travelled towards you. Ah, uh, because the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the finish. You know, like I went there, my teammate. They told me I have to score, have to score at least one. So I went there. I want to do my part. They already done their part, nil nil, and then I can't finish it. So I'm proud for my team and my coach too, and everybody behind the team, supporting too, the fans. Thanks, all of them. Yep. Yeah, well, they were right behind you. When you went out, there was an applause that went on. When you got the goal, they were fantastic. I was down that end of the pitch, too. Your run was really well-timed. I mean, that wasn't a fluke. You know, the ball was coming. You had no idea when it was kicked where it was going to land. But you were the first player that moved, and you got it. Yeah, because uh, I saw the guy. He's kicking the ball. I know he's going to kick it on the ground. Defenders, they're all, like, stuck in the same place. They can't, they can't got it. And then I, I went between them. Scored. The result was there. Yeah. And the crowd erupted. And they were singing out your name. Holy wood. Holy wood. Oh, that was me. Okay. <laughs> anyway, mate, it's good to see you. Get better because we really need you on the pitch. You always had something too. Yeah, and hearts are really happy to have you. So congratulations, matey. Thanks. Take care. Mate. All right. Um, one more last question for you, Johnny. Um, you predicted a win. Oh, sorry, I predicted a win for hearts. So it's time. You predicted a draw. 
you could have got a draw a couple of times there. There were there were moments for me. I've always thought the second game back from an injury or second game back, you know, after you know maybe playing a reserves game, is often difficult. Did you find there was fatigue in that half? Uh, towards the end, there was. Yeah. Um, again, and and speaking to Tio when we when we're streaming it as well, we were speaking about the benches. They're going to play a, a major part in this game. Sure. And and you could see, you know, the conditions. Obviously, the conditions didn't favour the players. It, yep. it got a bit warm in the second half as well. And again, it, we're only two weeks in. Remember, um, you know, most of these players haven't done a full preseason. So you know, you could see that players were using their benches, and we knew that you know the players that were going to come on were going to make a difference. And obviously. Credit to Damon Audrey, you know, he, he got the substitutions right and paid off for him in the end. Yeah, and they do play as a team, as you mentioned. There's a real sort of, I don't know, a solidity about what they're trying to do. And it's early in the year, so you, that's only going to get better. So they are going to be serious contenders for the four at the end. Exactly. And, and watching them, and, and we always talk about strikers and, you know, scoring goals. Let's not forget they played two games in two weeks, uh, two clean sheets. So, you know, being a defender, clean sheet was like scoring a hat-trick. So at the end of the day, two clean sheet. Damon Audrey will be will be wrapped, um, and again they'll hit the ground running, and they'll be full of confidence come come next week. Absolutely, and I think I heard John Tamboros's name and the word hat trick in one sentence. <laughs> that doesn't happen often, but I know what you mean. Your defending was exactly like that, and you saw it again. And I think it's a really good point. It's a telling point, John, that this team has been able to scrounge a goal in each half in the dead of the game, take home a win, and they've had a clean sheet. So you can't ask for much more. Like they said the coach will go home happy. I saw the president up there before. He's going to go home and have a nice strong cup of Himalayan tea. <laughs> um, so we will leave you now with one final thought. We're back here again tomorrow. It's four o'clock. Got a great game between Uni Zuri and Mindel. And then heavyweights, 8 p.m. Hellenic take on Kazarina. Looking forward to both those games. This is the Men's Premier League. This is Darwin, Northern Territory. It is a beautiful 21 degrees out there. A lovely night to head home from the football. We wish you all the best. Thank you for watching on whatever device it was. We'll see you tomorrow, 4 o'clock.